Yo, 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 what up, y'all? It's your boy Rob coming back at you once again with another live stream. So before we get started, you already know what to do. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the bell icon twice. Smash the like button, share this video out to all of your followers, and let's get it cracking, all right? So shout out to everybody who is in the building early. It is good to see each and every one of you. I appreciate you all for being here. If you guys can hear me okay, please give me a thumbs up or radiation emoji in the chat. If you guys cannot hear me or the visual is not looking good, please give me a thumbs down or angry face and I will try to work on it. All right. We getting these out the way so that we can get to the grand finale. <laughs> we getting them out the way so we can get to the grand finale. So shout out to Volvo 2 Love. What's good with the Volvo? We got Katsy in the building. We got Carlton Way in the house. Shout out to my man Cameron Jones and shout out to AB Promotions. It is good to see y'all. All right. So we briefly touched on this yesterday, but we're going to dive into it a little bit more deep right now, talking about what's going on at the migrant shelters in Chicago, right? Where else this is happening at in the United States? Shout out to Robert Taylor. And what they're trying to attribute this to. Now, how many people are aware of the measles outbreaks in Chicago? If you guys are aware of that, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not aware of that, please give me a thumbs down. All right. In case you didn't know, like Nate Dog said, or no, who's that? Warren G. And if you don't know, not no, that was notorious big. If you don't know, now you know. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what did Nate Dog say? Oh, yeah, he said, uh, hey, you don't want to step to this. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Some funked out migrants <laughs> with measles infections. <laughs> if you smoke like I smoke, <laughs> you, then you high like every day. <laughs> and if your ass got the measles, then you better get the hell away. <laughs> Oh, man. Regulators, mount up. You know what I'm saying? And this shit could play any minute now. Let's see what we got going on here. Why this shit ain't playing? Hold on real quick, y'all. Give me a second. All right. There we go. No, there we go. All right. This is the latest situation here, all right? This is the latest. The CDC has touched down in Chi-Town, in the Windy City. They out there. Now, let me ask you guys this. Why would the CDC be out there? We're going to find out. Tanya Terrell, a team of experts from the CDC is expected to arrive in Chicago today to support the local response. It comes as the measles is spreading rapidly at a multi-story warehouse turned living space for migrants. Yesterday, city health officials confirmed two more adults at the Pilsen shelter. Did you guys hear what she said? Look at this. Now, yesterday we were only at two cases. Now they talking about it's about five cases in Chicago with uh, people with measles and it's spreading inside that warehouse building. Tanya Terrell, a team of experts from the CDC, is expected to arrive in Chicago today to support the local response. It comes as the measles is spreading rapidly at a multi-story warehouse turned living space for migrants. Yesterday, city health officials confirmed two more adults at the Pilsen shelter have now fallen ill with a highly contagious virus. That's now at least five people citywide and four people, including two young children at the shelter, to be diagnosed with measles. Mayor Brandon Johnson says city health officials are working around the clock to combat and contain the measles outbreak. We're going literally floor to floor with partners, um, encouraging um, migrants to get vaccinated. There are some individuals, whether you're a migrant or not, people that have some hesitancy and some reticence around it. 
Also, Cook County Health is notifying patients, visitors, and staff about possible measles exposure connected to two of the Chicago cases. This involves three Cook County Health facilities. One of the patients was admitted to Stroger Hospital's emergency department on February 27th, and a second person who later tested positive for measles visited Arlington Heights Health Center and Cook County Health's professional building on March 7th. Meanwhile, city leaders now say 95% of people living in the Pilsen shelter have been vaccinated against measles, and they're working to increase vaccination rates at every shelter across the city as a possible eviction date for some shelter residents approaches later this week. What? Now, let me ask you guys this question. What happens if some of those uh, some of those shelter residents... What happens? What happens if some of those shelter residents... who are getting evicted have measles and don't know that they have measles and then turn around and bring it to the next facility that they're at. What happens then? See, this is extremely concerning. Shout out to John Guillory. What's good with it, bro? This is extremely concerning. And the reason why it's co extremely concerning is because we have to pay very close attention and see how it's managed. Now, judging by how they've managed the migrant crisis thus far, judging as to how the last outbreak that broke out here in the United States went, that this channel is named after, I got the feeling that this is probably not going to go very well. Real quick, shout out to everybody that's watching. I appreciate you guys. If you guys haven't smashed that like button, please take a moment, smash the like button. Also, if you guys haven't hit the bell, please take a moment, hit that bell, and share the stream to your social media. See, shout out to John. This, this is what's not being talked about. John says, man, this measles outbreak is wild. We had some cases in Georgia. Bro, it's popping up all over the United States. For now, five. Five confirmed measles cases in Chicago, and four of those cases are at a migrant shelter in Pilsen. The city just confirming two new cases at that shelter today. We're also looking see five cases. Four of them are confirmed at the migrant shelter. Where's the other one at? That means that the other one. That means that the other one isn't at the migrant shelter. So where's that at? Shout out to Katzi. Katzi said we had three in Florida. Shout out to <laughs> Carlton Crazy. Shout out to Carlton Way. Carlton Way said, I remember We Lit said something very profound on Reacts. He said, these people use black folks as a vessel of destruction. Brandon Johnson, Eric Adams, et cetera. These clowns should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, facts. I agree 110%. If you guys agree with Carlton, give me a thumbs up. If you guys disagree, give me a thumbs down. That's a fact. For now, five. Five confirmed measles cases in Chicago, and four of those cases are at a migrant shelter in Pilsen. The city just confirming two new cases at that shelter today. And we're also learning more about the CDC's plan to help stop the spread of measles here in Chicago. The team will work closely with city and state health departments, and the CDC team will help with things such as testing and vaccinations, determining the immunity status of people who may have been exposed. Watch breaking. So again, remember, Brandon Johnson was saying when, when this all first happened, he said, these people are coming here sick. They're sick. They're coming here sick. And remember when he was saying that, we kept asking the question, well, what are they sick with? What are they sick with? And at that time, it wasn't being talked about. Viral condition that can be spread to a respiratory tract. It can also be spread on person to person contact. What makes your measles, measles uh, pretty unique is that it can stay in the air for longer than the normal virus. And you don't necessarily have to be in the spray of it, but you can be, but it will last longer uh, once you're in the spray. So that's why it makes it so highly contagious. Exactly. Because it can stick around longer than your typical virus. Right. The, obviously when you have measles, there's the rash. Everyone sort of has seen that. What are the symptoms of measles? So it, it can mimic common things that we see like a rash, 
uh, runny nose, fever, chills, congestion, sore throat, uh, maybe some laryngitis, many things, many other viral conditions. So it's hard to really tell sometimes. In children, it's a little bit easier because they do have some pathognomonic findings on their physical exam, but in adults, you may not be able to tell. Okay, which also makes it tough, right? You it's, may not know right away that that's someone. Exactly. Someone so again, when it comes to the adults, right, which we know that the majority of the people in the migrant shelters are adults, if the adults end up having measles, and they are not showing symptoms and they're just carriers, they get evicted and then go to another shelter or go somewhere else. My question for you guys is what happens then? Yeah, I got to agree. This is horrible. This is not a good thing at all. And that's a good question, uh, Katsy. I haven't seen anything or heard anything where they've identified uh, an isolated strain. Someone has. Exactly. So when people say this is the first case in Chicago since 2019, like why is this a big deal that we actually have a measles case in Chicago? Well, many of our specialists, I mean, when the the the, the accomplishment of vaccinations in younger patients has, has created a situation where they are so well vaccinated, our, our kids, that conditions that they saw back in the 50s, we are not seeing anymore. All those kids in the 50s did not bring those diseases into the 60s, into the 70s, into the 80s. And as a result, when we have folks who come in who are into the environment who are not vaccinated and they do come down with these conditions, our bodies are to a degree immune to them, but we haven't seen it. So our immunities haven't really been tested as much as they should be, such as the flu. Okay. Flu comes down all the time, so our immunities are always tested. Okay. So for people, you know, the question again asked by one of our producers today was, I was vaccinated as a kid. Now I'm in my 40s. Mm -hmm. Do I still have immunity? Am I protected from this outbreak? What would your answer be? So generally speaking, if you were vaccinated as a child, you should have immunity. Now, with that being said, if you are immunocompromised, because what you are when you were seven is not what you are when you're 57 or 67 or 47 for that matter. If you are have an immunocompromised condition and this. So now here goes my question, right? With this new strain of measles or with these new issues going on, don't you think that it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for people to start testing the tighter? making sure that people have immunity actually see w when it comes to this a lot of the stuff that they're doing they're not really doing things in the order that they should be doing it in and that's what people really should be questioning and asking about include stuff such as cancers, being on treatments, diabetes, obesity, hypertension. You should really talk to your primary care provider about am I due for an am I worth is it worth getting another MMR vaccination? Okay. So it's an individual, especially if you're in a high risk setting, then you may if you exactly. work in a hospital, if you work in one of these shelters, that would seem or, to warrant the or even if you work in an aggregate setting, such as a nursing home or a, or a boarding situation where you're dealing with a lot of people living in that same <laughs> set, in a situation. Okay. Now, Volvo said no nah, because they want to go skate, 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 go skate, 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 skate. The other question I think for people was it, it isn't a hundred percent effect. No vaccine is a hundred percent effective, right? It's ninety seven percent. So again, if I am not high risk. What is my risk of getting measles again now that we know that we have cases in Chicago? So your risk of getting measles is if you're in the proper place to get measles. So you have to have the virus somewhere around you. Uh, that does not mean if some if a measles outbreak is happening a mile away from you, that you are in a situation where that's happening. Uh, if you are in a situation where um, uh, it, it just makes sense for viral conditions we're having now. If you're in a situation where there's someone coughing or sneezing and you don't feel comfortable, wear your mask, make sure you wash your hands. All the precautions we take for regular viruses. Okay, so that's really the best way to protect yourself again, yeah. besides yeah. getting vaccinated. Correct. Now, Absolutely. the concern for unvaccinated obviously, we have all these new arrivals coming in, many traveling, bringing, bringing very little with them. Mm -hmm. If someone has not does not have proof of vaccination, what would your recommendation be? Should now, here's the thing, right? We got to ask this question because this is a common sense question, and we're not allowed to ask common sense questions anymore because it's 2024. If you're not documented, what kind of access? to someone's healthcare records like vaccination is anybody going to have people who are coming into these migrant shelters in most cases do you think that there's an extensive health history on these people 
they be vaccinated anyway? Is there any harm in vaccinating them again, even if they say they were vaccinated? So those who do not know their vaccination status or those who feel like they may need a booster, uh, the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccination, or the MMR, is a very, very safe vaccination. We've given it to hundreds of millions of, of doses, uh, and we really it's one of our most safest vaccinations that we have. So I don't hesitate to tell them, let's just go ahead and get an MMR and catch up or get yourself some documentation that you had it done. Okay. And anyone who hasn't been vaccinated, my understanding is children would need two doses. Adults would only need one. Is that correct? Um, children, the assumption is that adults have had their boosters before. That's why they only need one, okay. but it's not necessarily the case. So there are catch up uh, regimens that we follow for people who don't know their vaccination status. Children should follow or do their catch up because every, every age has their vaccination uh, uh, set of vaccinations they should have. But if they don't know, they can catch up with the vaccinations. Okay. And my, and another question is that people are asking too, is we do know that there have been these exemptions there has been a rise in vaccine exemptions for schools and things like that. Mm -hmm. Illinois is still one of the higher, you know, immunity you mm -hmm. know, states with immunity. But um, Florida, for instance, I know California had to reinstate their mandate because mm -hmm. they saw some outbreaks. Um, is that is the campaign for an, the anti-vaccination campaign? Is that hurting herd immunity? Is that something that parents should be aware of? I, I I'd like to take this attitude. If you are not getting vaccinated, you put yourself at risk for the, getting the disease and getting the complications. Third the confirmed disease. measles. Um, it's kind of like what we had with our COVID vaccinations. It doesn't stop you from getting COVID, but it will stop you from getting into the hospital. Mm -hmm. If you don't vaccinate for measles, then you are set up for getting all the possible complications of measles, as opposed to someone who has maybe had one or two. Okay. Okay. So. Is that something that do you think healthcare professionals need to be paying attention to? The fact that we have seen this rise in exemptions, yes. could we be seeing more measles, even though Illinois still remains one of the you know top states? Yeah. Um, could we be seeing more measles in the future? We could be seeing a lot more of those childhood conditions that have been kind of. So now, one of the things that I plan on doing is I'm going to try to keep track of how many cases in places outside of Illinois that we hear about the measles. Because the thing is, is that honestly, you really shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any measles. We shouldn't be hearing about this. So the fact that there's these cases popping up and they're popping up in locations other than Illinois, that's actually a really big problem that they're trying to downplay at this current moment, which is probably one of the reasons why they hurried up and got the CDC over there to that migrant shelter where all this is jumping off. Have, uh, improved by vaccinations because there's really, we have free pass of people from all different states. Um, and so we can possibly see a rise in that. Um, but you know, within Illinois, we, we kind of are very good at pinpointing where we see our outbreaks. And we usually can tell relatively easily because of our high vaccinated rates, who, uh, what kind of populations will be really targeting our treatments for. Okay, so I guess the last question would just be simply, people are gonna see this, measles cases in Chicago, who should be concerned? So the people who, folks who should be concerned about the measles outbreak are those who have never been vaccinated, those folks who are living in situations where they're in a cluster or are close communication with other folks, um, those who are um, behind or don't know their vaccination status, they should be concerned, but then they should also speak with the primary uh, a healthcare provider about what are their true risks and what are their next steps to keep them safe. Okay. All right, so there's that. All right, so let me see. Next. We're going to just take two quick looks at these other two cases of uh, measles that have come out and see what they talk about. And then we're going to look at an explanation that Brandon Johnson has for it. And then we're going to look at something that's come back to haunt us. And look at this. This, this doesn't want to play. <laughs> It's not playing no games. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Hold on real quick. Let's see. Let's try this again. And real, real quick, shout out to everybody that's watching. I appreciate y'all. If you guys haven't smashed the like button, please take a moment, smash the like button. Also, if you guys haven't hit the bell and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and subscribe to the channel. And also, please share the stream to your social media. A third confirmed measles case in Chicago, this time a child in CPS schools living in the Pilsen migrant shelter where another case was confirmed last week. So now, see, here's the problem, right? You see how they ran that by real quick in the CPS? What that means is Chicago public schools. So if this child is from this migrant shelter and he's going to the Chicago public schools, what that means is we don't know if he's been to the school since he's had measles. So what could have possibly happened is that there could be a possibility that there was a spread of measles 
from this migrant shelter to this child to the Chicago public school that this child attends. If you guys agree that that's a possible scenario, give me a thumbs up. If you guys don't, give me a thumbs down. I wouldn't be surprised that if in the coming weeks we start hearing about these cases breaking out at school in kids who don't have immunity to measles. Melina's always investigating and she spent the day gathering the latest. She's live outside of CPS headquarters. And Tara, how is CPS responding? Well, Marie and Chris, I'm told that they're working with the health department right now to determine the vaccination status of all school aged children living in that shelter asked to stay home from school today. We asked why they didn't start doing all of that until now. Yeah, that, and that's a great question, because, again, remember, Brandon Johnson repeatedly said they're coming here sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He repeatedly said they're coming here sick. So if he repeatedly said that they're coming here sick, then what that means is that they've known for quite some time that there's an issue. And another thing is, why are they only investigating at the migrant shelter and why are they not actually looking at what's going on at the school? They already know that those cases are at the migrant shelter. They need to check and see that they haven't spread anywhere, which the spread would be to the school. Three confirmed measles Carla. cases doing, in Carla? Chicago in three days. The latest, a child living in this Pilsen migrant shelter attending Chicago public schools. Hospitalized right now, but in good condition. Measles is probably the most contagious virus that we know of. That's Dr. Larry Kosiolik with Lurie Children's. On average, one child will spread it to 18 additional children if they're not vaccinated. They are not treating measles cases at Lurie, but he says with a confirmed case in CPS, it's time for parents who chose not to vaccinate their kids to listen up. Parents should be very comfortable with the safety of our vaccines. We took a closer look at vaccination data and we've told you there are concerns statewide and here in Chicago. Some CPS schools are well below the vaccination rate set by the Centers for Disease Control. 95% to achieve herd immunity. So now here's my question for you guys. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. If the schools right now are well below the recommended immunity rate and one child is known to more than likely infect 18, what do you think is the likely outcome of what we're going to be hearing about in the next couple of weeks? What, what do you guys think is about to happen? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. How, how is this about to go? This confirmed case in a school, reason for concern. Measles is an airborne disease, which means if somebody has measles, that virus will fill an airspace. So anytime uh, that is in a congregate setting, whether it's a school or a shelter, could be a concert or a college campus, there's risk for lots of people being exposed. According to health officials, nearly 900 people who did not have prior evidence of immunity to measles have been vaccinated. After 21 days, when those vaccines have taken their full effect, they will have covered nearly everyone in this shelter, something Mayor Brandon Johnson spoke to today. We have a quarantine plan. Uh, it's a 20 day quarantine, so this is not um, something that is going to go away um, immediately. So this quarantine is 21 days. Um, but again, we're encouraging as many people in the city of Chicago to get vaccinated. I asked Chicago Public School officials several questions today, and I've been asking them for days about vaccination status checks and why none of this happened until now. I'm told I should have answers to some of those questions by the end of the day. Hopefully we do, and we can update the story that's online right now. Reporting outside CBS headquarters, I'm Tara Molina, CBS 2 News. Well, <clears throat> there's that. And I agree. These, these are, listen, I'm... Stopping the spread of disease is one of the reasons why Title 42 was in place. Would you guys agree? If you guys agree that one of the reasons that Title 42 was in place was to stop the spread of disease, give me a thumbs up. If you guys disagree and you think that there was something else that was the reason for Title 42, then uh, give me a thumbs down and let me know what you think it was. Why am I bringing that up? I'm bringing that up because this is the issue. Many of these places that don't have the same type of uh, CDC guidance or the same type of health standards as us or the same vaccination requirements can come in with different pathogens or different amounts of those pathogens and cause spread of illness. That can occur by undocumented people or people not telling the truth about their immunities, about their health records, 
about all of this stuff. This is one of the reasons why this stuff is so risky. City and state health officials are trying to control the spread of measles at this migrant shelter in Pilsen, as this is now the second confirmed case at this location. Today, the city's health department telling us a team from the CDC is now coming to Chicago to help with a response. Throughout the weekend, health officials have been screening new arrivals for symptoms of measles. Trump's not con Trump's not concerned about the measles. <laughs> what Trump's major concern about is these unidentified languages that keep coming in here that we don't have any uh, interpreters out here to deal with. That's that's what Trump is worried about. <laughs> Administering vaccines as needed. This comes as now a second child at this migrant shelter has tested positive. The third person in Chicago to have contracted the highly contagious and dangerous virus since last Thursday. So the measles virus is very contagious. Um, you know, if um, somebody who is infected with measles, um, coughs, sneezes um, in any area, um, it can hang up in the air for the next two hours. Dr. Damilola Adiemi says if you receive the measles vaccine as a child, you have lifelong protection. Some migrant volunteers say they saw this coming at migrant shelters because safety protocols are lacking. And this is exactly the sort of thing that we predicted. 25th Ward Alderman Byron Sikjo Lopez says he's at the shelter today helping coordinate vaccination efforts. He says the migrant shelters are so overpacked. This one in Pilsen has 800 people over capacity. He believes more vaccination checks need to be done at the initial landing zone when migrants first arrive. How are they going to do vaccination checks? How are they going to do that? How do you check somebody's health status, health records, if they don't have documents? How do you check anything about these people's identification or any information about them or any element of their background, whether it's a criminal check, whether it's a health check, whether it's a health record, whether it's a real estate record, whether it's a court record? How do you check any of it if these people don't have any identification? This is the same question that we've been asking since day one, which is one of the reasons why it's so important for them to actually take this serious and get a hold on it. Shout out to Patricia Slade. What's going on with it, Patricia? Would you guys agree? Now, the second child confirmed with measles is in the hospital right now for treatment and is in good condition, while the first toddler is no longer infectious and has recovered, officials say. The city's health department encouraging all Chicagoans to get vaccinated to protect themselves and their community. Watch. So, so far, what we have currently is we have five total confirmed cases of the measles in Chicago. That's five more cases of the measles than I'm comfortable with, especially coming from a source where we're not sure about any of the documentation of any of the people who possibly spread them. Because what we can say for certain is that they were indeed certainly spread by the people at the migrant shelters. This is something that we can say factually. It's an actual fact. YouTube can't change anything about it. This is what happened. This is what we know. This is what the evidence has shown us. I'm concerned tonight about the health of migrants in Chicago because cases of measles were confirmed here in the city. So far, there have been three cases, one in a Chicago. Yeah, I got to I got to agree with you, Carla. Here's here's my thing. Right. Shout out to Carla. Carla says they should have had inoculation sites as they can through the fences at the border. Yeah, what they should have done is anybody that doesn't have documentation, they should be treated like they have the worst of the worst issues. They should be treated like they have the worst criminal record. They should be treated like they have the worst health record until verified otherwise for safety purposes, which, and, and, and one of the reasons why would be that that would incentivize people to immigrate the proper way with the proper documentation so that these things could be verified for safety purposes and for facilitation of their own ease of integration. I mean, seriously, make this make sense. Among new arrivals, Casey Crotus is live in Buena Park with the latest on this. Casey? 
Hi, Terrence and Sylvia. What we know is that both of those cases in migrants are in children, and both of them stem from the Pilsen Migrant Shelter. But there is now concern that cases of measles could start popping up at other migrant shelters throughout the city. Over the weekend, health department officials say they continue to screen shelter residents for symptoms and get them vaccinated. This comes as the city's 60-day migrant shelter limit, which was already extended more than <laughs> <laughs> is expected to <laughs> shout out to john guillory john guillory says in other words rob they should be treated like black people yeah dei right diversity equity and, and inclusion be diverse with the people that you uh you know spread that ws nonsense to you know what i'm saying treat everybody like y'all treat us <laughs> to kick in this coming weekend. Measles hasn't been identified in the city since 2019. Last year, the state experienced five cases. According to the Chicago Department of Public Health, the majority of Chicagoans are vaccinated and aren't at high risk. But for those who aren't, measles is a highly contagious and serious respiratory infection that could lead to pneumonia and other complications. Symptoms include cough, runny nose, red eyes, fever, and a rash. Mayor Brandon Johnson addressed the situation this morning. This is a um, growing national crisis. Um, there's been a the, 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 now, now, do you hear Brandon Johnson? This has been a growing national crisis. What are you talking about, Brandon Johnson? Are you talking about the migrant crisis or are you talking about the increase in cases of measles nationwide? Let me, I'm going to ask you guys, which one is Brandon Johnson talking about? Is Brandon Johnson talking about the migrant crisis or is he talking about the spread of measles nationwide? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 now it's a, na a national crisis. This is a um, growing national crisis. Um, there's been an uptick around the country. And the first case that we experienced in Chicago was on the northwest side of Chicago. And so our our public health department were on the ground, particularly um, at you know the, the various shelters to make sure that we are getting as many people vaccinated as possible and as quickly as possible. And we reached out to the mayor's office asking if that first round of evictions when that 60 day shelter notice kicks in this weekend will still happen. We're told by a spokesman it is a fluid situation and that we should be learning more this week. Yeah, a fluid situation, fluid that has measles floating around in it. So we're going to take a look at this right here. Okay. Because one of the interesting things that they're doing is not only is Brandon Johnson saying this, but this is also being said elsewhere that one of the reasons, quote unquote, for get this, one of the reasons for the measles cases is due to V word hesitancy. How can it be due to V word hesitancy? What it's actually due to is it's due to noncompliance with immigration policies. <laughs> would you would you guys agree because we wouldn't be having this measles issue if these people were not here illegally if they didn't spend all that money on a migrant shelter this wouldn't be going on but according to brandon johnson it's because of the word hesitancy as federal health officials respond to a second child in Chicago's largest migrant shelter developing measles, Mayor Brandon Johnson on Monday ascribed the recent cases to vaccine hesitancy and ramped up messaging on getting inoculated against the disease. Well, let me ask you guys this question. Aren't there health standards with immigration? And if they had to immigrated properly, wouldn't that be part of what's necessary to be uh, integrated into American society is through USCIS meeting the vaccination standards of here in America. 
Isn't that what that's part of? I know if you check the U.S. State Department and you want to go to other countries, you got to check and make sure that you have your vaccines up to par with what those countries have as their requirements of entry. The mayor responded to questions about the quarantine facility on Cermak Road and Halstead Street by noting that most Chicagoans are vaccinated against measles. It doesn't matter if most Chicagoans are vaccinated against measles because there's been a huge influx of migrants that's increased the amount of Chicagoans. That's just like if you got four people inside of your house and then you bring three people inside of your house and you say, don't worry, you know, the four people that were here already, most of them are vaccinated. It doesn't matter. You just brought in three new people. You just increased the amount of people there. You know what I'm saying? Particularly those, of course, who use the public space, public schools in particular, the second child who caught measles is a Chicago public school student, officials said, which means that this student could possibly have exposed other students who are not associated with that migrant shelter to measles, possibly. Shout out to Al McAllen. What's good with it, bro? Would you guys agree? And that is an issue. That's a huge issue. We're literally floor to floor with partners encouraging migrants to get vaccinated, Johnson said to reporters at an event unrelated to the measles cases. There are some individuals, whether you're a migrant or not, people that have some hesitancy and some reticence around it. And so we're doing some real serious education. But it remains unclear how much progress has been made vaccinating Chicago's growing population of asylum seekers. And that's another thing. The population of asylum seekers is growing damn near exponentially. Let me ask you guys this question. Which population is growing faster, Chicago's native population or Chicago's migrant population? Let me know the answer to that question in the comment section. Which is growing faster, Chicago's migrant population or Chicago's native population? Which one is growing faster, would you guys say? And, and the thing is, shout out to Katsy. Katsy said the illegal population. The illegal population is part of the migrant population, right? So you got the, the legal migrants, right? Then you have the people who have like resident alien status. And then you have the illegal ones, the undocumented. And those populations are growing at a, at a very, not only at a very fast rate, but at an accelerating, acceleratingly fast rate. Like the, the rate of how many of them is coming is constantly increasing, increasingly accelerating rate, is, is I think is how I should uh, properly grammatically phrase that. Last Saturday, the city reported its first case of measles since 2019. Now, if you're reporting a, a first case of a disease that you haven't seen any traces of since 2019, I would say that that's pretty concerning. I would say that that's something that at, at the very least, at the very least, needs to at least just be monitored. You know what I'm saying? Because the situation could be developing. A second case this time involving a migrant child in the Pilsen shelter was reported Friday. The third case, which was the, sh was the second at the shelter, was reported on Sunday. The Chicago Public Department of public health did not provide vaccination data on Chicago's migrant population. Now, let me ask you guys this question. What do you think the popu the, the vaccination data on the migrant population in Chicago looks like? First and foremost, probably looks like a big ass question mark, because how do you know what the hell any undocumented people's status of anything is? <laughs> First of all, 
But second of all, let's just say it's not a big ass question mark. How many of these people do you think are vaccinated? Well, one way that you can see if they're vaccinated or not is you can take a look at the country of origin and see what the requirements are for those particular vaccinations in the country of origin. So I don't know. Right. But if the majority of those people were from Venezuela, well, we'd have to look at Venezuela and say, what are the normal immunizations that the government encourages, recommends or requires for Venezuela? And if MMR is not on there, then it's probably highly likely that a large percentage of those people do not have the required immunities. Right. Would you guys if you guys agree, give me a thumbs up. If you guys disagree, give me a thumbs down. These aren't difficult things to figure out. What we have are a bunch of people in charge who are not qualified. And if they are qualified, their critical thinking really seems to be lacking. But they should have teams working on this kind of stuff. So even if you have one person, you know, and it's like, oh, OK, you know, maybe, you know, I'm not the brightest. OK. There's somebody else on the team that should be able to pick up the slack, right? But what we have is a situation where, like, literally nobody's picking up the slack, and, you know, it's like the car is driving itself right off a cliff. So, now, I don't think we need to go any further. You know what I'm saying? Because this, for the most part, just goes into the same thing that all of those series of videos that we watched says. But now here's an interesting uh, scenario here. How many people heard about the measles cases in Boston? If you guys heard about the measles cases in Boston, let me know. Because that's exactly what we got going on. OK, and wait until you see what they're attributing it to. Post pandemic vaccine hesit hesitancy fueling latest measles outbreak. Really? Really? Most people that were vaccinated for uh, measles, most people that are vaccinated with the MMR vaccination, they're vaccinated as kids. So whatever attitudes that people have as a result of C-19 more than likely is not going to affect the status of these vaccines for measles. This is stuff that people had like to get into kids to kindergarten. You know what I'm saying? To get into public schools. You have these as a child, like your parents take you to the pediatrician to get this. So how can these, what is this attitudes doing? Making people go back in time? Like this doesn't make any sense. They're saying post-pandemic vaccine hesitancy fueling latest measles outbreak. How? Unless they're talking about in kids, then how? <laughs> it's a and shout out to Cassie. Cassie said that's a load of crap. It's a it's a steaming load of crap. If you guys if you guys agree that this headline is as it appears right now a hot mushy steaming load of crap give me a thumbs up if you guys don't think so then give me a thumbs down i think this is i think this is a hot steaming load of crap that's so hot and steamy that if it was in a room and it was cold inside it would actually raise the temperature up a little bit and you wouldn't even have to turn the heat on <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? You get some, some leftover body heat. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. Cases of the measles are rising across the country and seem to be striking counties at random. But experts say that there is one thing the public health system can do to turn the tide. And that's to stem 
the post pandemic vaccine lag and get parents to vaccinate their kids. Now, let me ask you guys a question, right? Most people that had a quote unquote issue with the C-19 vaccine, many people had a separate issue with the C-19 vaccine than they did with other vaccines. There's many other people that take other vaccines that were kind of skeptical about C-19. If you ask me, the C-19 vaccine hesitancy is completely different. Now, there are some people that are just anti any type of, of, of injectable immunity. We get that, right? But with most people, I would say that there's a large group of the public that's, for the most part, okay with most traditional injectable immunities, but they were highly skeptic of the C-19. Would you guys say that that's a fair assumption to make? If you guys think that that's a fair assumption to make, give me a thumbs up. If you guys don't, if I'm wrong about that, give me a thumbs down. I think that people had a different kind of skepticism about the C-19. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think that you can attribute C-19 skepticism to something that's been around as long as the MMR vaccine. I think this is insane. And I think that, honestly, one of the things that this article is doing is diverting away from where they're finding a lot of these measles outbreaks, which is at migrant shelters. Because of the close living conditions and the dirty conditions that they have in many of these places. And also because of the different health standards that they had at a lot of these people's countries of origin. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think. General vaccination rates, including measles vaccination, declined during the C-19 pandemic as people had less access to health care and kids were unable to access in-school vaccine clinics. That, combined with a new wave of vaccine skepticism and anti-vaccine sentiment, has contributed to a wave of unvaccinated kids falling sick with the once eradicated virus. Now, let me ask you guys a question. What they're trying to attribute to this new outbreak of uh, measles, is this the cause of it at the migrant shelter? Is, is this the cause of it at the migrant shelter? Like, are we seriously doing this? It sort of boggles the mind as a pediatrician, said Jesse Hackle, chair of the Committee on Practice and Ambulatory Medicine at American Academy of Pediatrics. I never want to go back to practicing medicine like it's the 1950s. Measles is highly transmissible, but measles vaccines are highly effective. And thanks to vaccination efforts, the U.S. is finally able to eradicate the disease in 2000. Now, if the United States was able to eradicate the disease in 2000, how is it that in Chicago they had a case in, what did they say, 2000, what it, 2010, did they say? How is it eradicated if they had a case? You know what I'm saying? But that didn't last. Only 92% of U.S. adolescents had been vaccinated against measles, according to a 2023 Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report. And 95% vaccination rate is considered enough to ward off future outbreaks or to create herd immunity, which is what uh, the, the school, right, in Chicago was under 95%. But also, right, uh, four out of five cases in Chicago all came from the migrant shelter. Four out of five of those cases came from the migrant shelter. No one child can import a case of measles if everyone else in the school is vaccinated. But if 5%, 7%, or 10% of the students are not vaccinated, the disease can spread like wildfire, Hackle said. Unfortunately, we're going to end up seeing some kids get very sick, he said. In the first month of 2024, the CDC reported a total of 35 cases in 15 jurisdictions, and that number is rising. How many people heard about this? This said in the first months of 2024.
in the first months of 2024, 35 cases in 15 jurisdictions have been reported. And states aren't reacting the way they once did. Florida Surgeon General Joseph Ladapo encouraged unvaccinated children not to miss school during the latest Broward County outbreak. Politicians and pediatricians have widely criticized this move, arguing it only motivates the anti-vaccine crowd and will lead to more virus spread. Sadly, Florida's Surgeon General stands in stark contrast to America's proud legacy <clears throat> of bipartisan public health success. Florida Democratic Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz said during a press conference in her home state earlier this week, during which she called on Latipo to resign. Latipo insisted, I'm sorry, Latipo instead politicizes public health and peddles risky freedom of choice rhetoric that fuels vaccine hesitancy and downplays the public and personal health ne necessary for vaccination. So then they go on and talk about the politicization of routine vaccinations. The anti-vaccine movement was supercharged during the pandemic, according to American Public Health Association Executive Director George's Benjamin, and the F and the effects of this are playing out across the country. Again, my question is, what does this these people who they're talking about, like if we talk about the Chicago migrant uh, shelter, those people weren't even in the United States during this. So the people. At, so if we take what they're saying in this article and apply it to the migrant shelter, those people at the migrant shelter weren't even in the United States to even be bombarded with any of that type of rhetoric. So, so the question would then be, how are they saying that it affected them? Some states that didn't have vaccine exemptions before the pandemic have now created some wiggle room in their policies to respond to an anti-vaccine sentiment. For example, prior to the C-19 pandemic, Mississippi had one of the highest measles vaccination rates in the nation, with more than 99% of kids inoculated against the virus because the state only allowed medical exceptions to routine vaccinations. But last year, Mississippi added a religious exemption for all vaccines after a federal judge ruled in favor of a medical freedom group challenging the law. Now, more than 2,600 parents have requested religious vaccine exemptions for their kids, according to the Mississippi Department of Health. We know we're certainly going to fall off a little bit, said Greg Flynn, a Mississippi Health Department spokesperson of state vaccination rates. Our concern is for the children that can't be vaccinated for the medical reasons being exposed to a disease that's not being eradicated. While Mississippi has yet to see a case of measles during this current wave, Flynn said the department is concerned about the spread from Florida to nearby New Orleans. But despite concerns about spreading the virus, experts warn that tightening vaccine requirements will only create more backlash because of how politicized vaccination has become. What I find interesting about this is that throughout this entire article so far, they have yet to mention the migrant crisis and how that could possibly be affecting this. Do you do you guys notice that? Isn't that crazy how they haven't mentioned the migrant crisis yet? This is not a time that most states are going to get more aggressive about tightening up any kind of mandate just because things are so polarized, said Marcus Plesia, chief medical officer at the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials. So then they go on and talk about missed opportunities. Before the pandemic, many kids received routine vac vaccinations, including measles, at back to school clinics. But these opportunities disappeared during the pandemic, and people also fell behind on routine pediatrician appointments. So as parents play catch up, many states have waived the once strict vaccine requirement to give families time to get back to the doctor. Unlike C-19, measles infects almost every unvaccinated person it comes in contact with. So now this is interesting. So what they're saying about measles is that 
measles had a higher it has a higher likelihood of infection rate than c19 which is interesting because why they try to go so hard on the c19 juice you know what i'm saying and and are laxed a little bit about the measles D does that make any sense also, unlike C-19, almost every person who receives the measles shot is protected from the disease for life. <laughs> this, just, this just makes you ask even more questions. This just makes you, this, this right here, this just makes you ask more questions about a lot of the decisions that were made regarding C-19. Would you guys agree? If you guys agree, give me a thumbs up. If you guys disagree, give me a thumbs down. Measles was one of those diseases, you know, that somebody walks through the room with measles and, you know, everybody's unvaccinated. Nine out of 10 people get it, Benjamin said. When an unvaccinated person comes in contact with measles, CDC guidance is to quarantine for 21 days, a time period that is not realistic for most children. New York State saw a significant measles outbreak in 2019 pre-pandemic that was isolated mainly to the Hasidic J community in Brooklyn. The New York Department of Health quickly quarantined the community, and I'm sure they said that it was anti-Semitic. This outbreak could get to be just as bad if we don't know when we need to act, Plessia said. And now the political environment is obviously much different, all right? Which... Is interesting again because this article here and this article came out on March 4th didn't mention anything about the migrant crisis, didn't mention anything about the migrant shelters. Somebody make that make sense. How many people remember what was it called? H1N1? Shout out to So It's Muscle Pain. What's good with it? You guys remember H1N1? What is H1N1? I know you guys remember H1N1. I think H1N1 occurred during the Obama presidency. You guys remember it? Uh-oh, shout out to Katsy. Katsy says she got H1N1. Uh-oh. If I'm not mistaken, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. H1N1 was the avian flu, the bird flu. Where did that bird flu <laughs> Where did that bird flu originate? Anybody remember? Which one was the bird flu? Okay, so H1N1 was the swine flu. So I'm 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 saying the wrong strain. Which one was the bird flu? The bird flu was the avian flu. What was what was the strain name for the avian flu? That's the one that I'm talking about. Anybody remember? Where did that av well shit? Where did where did both of them come from? Where did the swine flu and where did the avian flu come from? Somebody, somebody, look it up and let us know where the, where the swine flu and the bird flu came from. <laughs> now check this out. This report just came out from the USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, and this is some bad news right here. 2022-2024 detections of highly pathogenic avian influenza in animals. If I'm not mistaken, I think avian means bird. But now what they're saying is that there have been detections of the avian influenza in mammals. What what kind of what kind of animals are we? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So now here it says there are many species that are potentially susceptible to HPAI, 
in addition to birds and poultry, H5N1 viruses have been detected in some mammals. Infections may cause illness, including severe disease and death in some cases. Avian influenza is caused by influenza type A virus. Avian origin influenza viruses are broadly categorized based on a combination of two groups of proteins on the surface of influenza A virus. Hemagglutin or H proteins, of which there are 16, H1 through H16, and neuraminidase or N proteins, of which there are 9, N1 through N9. Many different combinations of H and N proteins are possible. So now you know how they name these viruses. Looks like the uh, first part of the virus is from the H protein that they see. And the second part is from the N protein that they see. So this has H protein number five and N protein number one. Shout out to Carla. Carla said avian is H5N1. Yep. What that means is it has surface protein H5 and surface protein N1. Now you guys can take that conversation somewhere and sound extremely brilliant, even though you guys already are extremely brilliant. Each combination is considered a different subtype and related viruses within a subtype may be referred to as a lineage. <laughs> Lineage-based viruses. <laughs> I wonder if any of them are subject to WS. Avian influenza viruses are classified as either low pathogenic or highly pathogenic based on their genetic features and severity of the disease they cause in poultry. Most viruses are of low pathogenicity, meaning that they cause no signs or only minor clinical signs of infection in poultry, all right? So these are all of the cases. These are the animals. See, in Washington State, some, an <laughs> some animal called a striped skunk. In Kentucky, there was a... <laughs> in Kentucky, there was a raccoon. I wonder if it was a politician. <laughs> California, a raccoon. I wonder if it was Karen Bass. California, raccoon, wonder if it was Maxine Waters. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we got this avian flu, bird flu, now jumping into mammals. Not good, because that means that if it has jumped into mammals, then that means that there's a possibility that it could, at some point, be infectious to humans. So that's nice. You know what I'm saying. So we got more content on the way. Make sure that you guys are subscribed to all the channels. Take a moment. Make sure y'all hit the bell icon twice. Make sure y'all smash that like button. If you guys watch on the replay, hashtag replay gang, please share the stream to your social media. I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, ladies and gentlemen,